reverence is due unto your name, God. Your name, glory. We thank you for this day, God, that you have made, God. And we declare that, Lord God, in this day, God, we'll give your name praise. Hallelujah. We'll give your name praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today because you care for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Oh, 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 I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Oh, because you care for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you, I lift you up, and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. If you love them, join in, I love you, I love you. Declare it, I love, tell them all, I love you, Lord. Today, because you care, because you cared for me in such a, such a special way. That's why I praise you and I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Oh, my heart, my heart, my mind, my soul belongs to you. Oh, you paid the price. <laughs> way back, way back, way back on Calvary. That's why I praise you, Lord, I lift you up, and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Oh, my heart, my heart, my mind, and my soul belongs to you. You pay, you pay the price for me. When, 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 way back on Calvary, that's why I praise you. Lord, I lift you up. And I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Oh, oh, oh my heart, my heart, my mind, my soul belongs to you. Yes, you paid the price for me. Oh, way back on Calvary, that's why I praise you and I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why I praise you and I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. Yes, God, I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Oh, I love you, I love you. 
I love you, yes. I love you, I love you, Lord, today. Because you care for me, you care for me in such a spiritual way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. My heart is filled with praise. That's why my heart is filled with praise. My heart is filled with praise. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Oh, my heart is filled with praise. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You're a great God. You're a great God. Hallelujah. 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 You're a great God. You're a great God. Hallelujah. 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 You, hallelujah. You great. You are the great God. Hallelujah. And we declare that this is the day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That you've made. Hallelujah. And we will rejoice, God. Hallelujah. Because you've made us glad. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. Oh, I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Yes, this is the day, oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. Oh, yes, this is the day, declare it, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. Oh, I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made, yeah. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Well, this is the day, oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. Oh, I will enter his gate with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. We'll rejoice for he has made me glad. Oh, he has made me, he has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Yes, he has made me glad. Yes, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Oh, yes, he has made me glad. Yes, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Glad, yes, he has made me glad, he has made me glad, I will rejoice for he has made me glad, oh yes, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made, oh, I will rejoice, I will rejoice, and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Yes, this is the day. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. Oh, yes, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter. 
enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Oh, he has made me glad. He has made me glad. The Lord has. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Yes, he has made me glad. Yes, yes, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Oh, he has made me. He has made me glad. He did it. He has made me glad. Yes, I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Oh, yes, he has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. I will enter, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. Oh, I will say, I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Oh, he has made me he has made me glad. Yes, it is. He has made me glad. Oh, I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Despite of he has made me glad. Because of he has made me glad. Oh, I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Oh, he has made me. He has made me glad. The Lord has. He has made me glad. Oh, I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. Yes, he has. He has made me glad. Oh, I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Oh, he has made me. He has made me glad. Oh, he has made me glad. Yes, I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Oh, he has made me glad. Today he has made me glad. Oh, I will rejoice for he has made me glad. For he has made me Hallelujah. glad. Glory this God. is the day that the Lord Hallelujah. has made. Yes. Let us rejoice Hallelujah. and be glad in Hallelujah. it. This Hallelujah. is the day, this one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This one. This is Hallelujah. the day that the Lord hath made. Hallelujah. Let us rejoice Glory and be glad Hallelujah. in it. Well, Hallelujah. we again Glory arise with the psalmist David Hallelujah. that said, I was glad. Hallelujah. When they said unto Hallelujah. me, come, let us go into the Hallelujah. house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Our feet shall stand Hallelujah. within thy gates, O Jerusalem. And those Glory that be planted in Hallelujah. the house of the Lord Hallelujah. shall flourish Hallelujah. in the Thank courts of our God. Hallelujah. Blessed assurance, Hallelujah. Jesus is mine. Hallelujah. Yes, right in the face of the pandemic. Glory to God. Oh, what Hallelujah. a foretaste yes. of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchased of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. Yes. This is my story. Hallelujah. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. Hallelujah. This is my song, Glory praising my Savior all the day long. Come on, saints. Let's just lift him up. Blessed, Blessed assurance, Jesus, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Of glory divine. Air of salvation. Air of salvation. in his blood. This is my story. This is my story. This is, this is my song. Praising. Praising my Savior. All the day. This 
is my story. This is my story. This is my song. This is my song. Praising my Savior. Praising Hallelujah. my Savior. All the day long. All the day long. Perfect submission. Perfect submission. Perfect delight. Perfect delight. Visions of rapture. Visions of rapture. Now burst. Now burst on my side. Angels. Angels Whispers of love. Whispers of love. This is my story. This is my story. This is my song. This is my song. Praising my Savior. Praising my Savior. All the day. This is my story. This is my story. This is my song. This is my song. Praising my Savior. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission. Perfect submission. All is at rest. All is at rest. I am my Savior. I am my Savior. I'm happy. I'm happy and blessed. Watching. Watching and waiting. Looking, looking above. Filled with his goodness. Filled with his goodness. Lost in his love. Lost in his love. Come on and let's praise him. This is, this is my story. This is my song. This, this is. is my song. Praising my Savior. Praising my Savior. All the day. All the Lift day him up. Lord. This is my story. This is, this is, this is my, my story. story. Oh, Lord. And this is my song. This is my song. I'll keep praising my Savior. Praising my Savior all the day, all the day. This is my story. This is my story. This is my story. This is my song. This is my song. Praising my Savior. Praising my Savior. This is my song. This is my song. Praising my Savior. Praising my Savior. All the day long. All the day long. Praising my Savior. Praising my Savior. All the day. Praising my Savior. Praising my 
Hallelujah. 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 God, you be praised 10,000 times. Hallelujah. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. All God has ever been to us is good. Praising my Savior all the day long in the sunshine, in the rain, all the day long. Praising my praising, Savior. Praising my Hallelujah. Savior. Do you have one more hallelujah? Right out there in virtual the land. Hallelujah. Long. Wherever you can hear my voice, praising my praising Savior. Praising my Savior. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of oh. God who has already taken away the sins of the world, praising my Savior. Praising my Savior. Hallelujah to the Lion of the tribe of Judah. He has already prevailed. Praising. Praising my Savior. Well, we thank God for our praise from the saints. Well, it's prayer time at the house of prayer. Praising. Praising it's prayer my time. Savior Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All the day long. Praising my Savior. All the day long. Eternal God, our Father, that's what we purpose to do is to praise you all the day long. The day it is long. our desire to please you in our praise. It's our desire to please you in our worship. It is our desire to please you in all that we do and say. Bless us on this day, we pray, O oh Lord. Our God, as we submit ourselves to you and to each other, we pray for the spirit of unity and oneness as we offer up a praise unto you, as we offer up worship unto you, as we give you back your Logos word, as we offer God ourselves unto you. We pray your blessings upon the gathering of the people of God in this beautiful sanctuary and all over live streaming God. We thank you now for the word that will go forth from this house, the word of healing, the word of deliverance, the word of hope, the word of joy, the word of strength. Thy word, O oh Lord, have we hid in our heart that we may not sin against you, God, Hallelujah. God, you're the one that causes us to walk upright. You're the one that has established our going. You are the one that's called us out of darkness into the marvelous light. We are your salt and light in the earth. You, We are your agents of change. We are the one who have the words of life to a dying world. We are the one that have the words of joy to a world that's downtrodden, the world that's depressed and oppressed. God, thank you for the voice of the church. Hallelujah. God, where sin abound, grace does much more abound. Thank you on this morning for your grace, Lord. Thank you on this morning for your grace being extended, God, unto those who've been afflicted by this modern-day plague. Thank you, God, for your grace in homes and marriages. Good, those who are bound in assisted living facilities in nursing homes, thank you for your grace but those who are loved ones of those who have transitioned this world. We are continually praying for them in this dark hour, Lord. We're continually lifting up those, that God, who are grieving, those who have been hurt. God, I thank you now for the strength of prayer, for the words of prayer, for the spirit of prayer, for the power of prayer. Your word, God, you sent into the earth to fulfill your will. It runneth swiftly to perform all that you purpose. You said you would to do us good and not evil. You are kind and merciful. You are kind and gentle, God, and I thank you now. And even on today, God, as we offer up, God, our services unto you. Bless this prince in the Lord's church, this uh, apostle, this bishop, God, as he stands behind this sacred desk for a word fitly spoken, how good it is. May it go forth and accomplish all that you purpose. 
these signs shall follow those that believe on your name. One will put a thousand to flight and two ten thousand. And the victory is already ours. Lord, we give you praise for it in advance. All that you're going to do in these services today, we thank you in advance. For your name is worthy of all the glory and all the praise. This we ask, believing and not doubting, that you've not only heard us, you've already answered. But this is the confidence that we have in you that when we call upon your name, you're quick to hear and you're quick to respond. We believe it to be so in Jesus' matchless and mighty name. Amen. own house. I declare and decree that this is my story and this is my song. No matter what's going on, I'm going to be praising my Savior all the day long. Isaiah 61 verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord had anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. I will bless his holy name. For the Lord is good. He is good today. He is good today. And Psalm 124, Psalm 124, the Lord is good. And it is because if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. Then the waters had overwhelmed us. The stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord who have not given us as a prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken, and we are escaped. The snare is broken, and we are escaped. For our help is in the name of the Lord, who hath made heaven and earth. May the Lord bless the reading of Psalm 124. Our New Testament reading, Romans 8, starting at verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose, from whom he did foreknow 
he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we say? What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him for us all. How shall we not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Who it is that, who is it, who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, whom is even at the right hand of God, who also make, maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness, or peril, or sword. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted for as sheep for the slaughter. Verse 37. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. Today, today, the church of the living God has a right now praise. Glory unto God. And it is today we cry glory to his name. Hallelujah. In persecutions, glory to his name. In affliction, glory to his name. In ups, glory to his name. Virus, glory to his name. No virus. Glory, hallelujah, to his name. Hallelujah. Glory to his name, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where from prison, from sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood applied. Singing glory to his name. Oh, we're singing glory to Just name, singing, glory to his name. 
mountain so rich and sweet. Cast, cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge, plunge into day and be made complete. Singing glory to his name. Fountain so rich and sweet. Cast, cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge, plunge into day and be made complete. Singing glory to his name. Oh, yes, we're singing glory to his name. Precious name. Glory to his name. Oh, there to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Oh, yes, we're singing. Glory to his name. Precious name. Singing glory to his name. Glory to his name, precious name. There to my heart was the blood of life. Glory to his name. Glory to his name, precious name. Singing glory to name of the Lord is a strong tower. And we the righteous run in and thereby we are saved. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the righteous run in and we are saved. For there is no other name given under heaven and among men whereby we may call and be saved except the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's salvation in the name of Jesus. That is why we can joy and say, singing glory to his name. Well, God, our Father, we love you this early afternoon. We thank you for your loving kindness and the multitude of your tender mercies, kind sir, by which you have already blotted out all of our transgressions. So we stand before you cleansed and clean because of the blood of Jesus. It is as if we have never sinned, for we've been washed in the crimson tide. And to this we give your name glory and honor. We bless your high, holy, and righteous name. Now we thank you not only for Jesus, and we do thank you for Jesus, yet we thank you for the Holy Spirit. For we understand it is the Holy Spirit. It is he that dwelleth in us, leads and guides us into all truth. For that is what Jesus has said. He said, I will pray the Father, and he shall send you a comforter that will lead and guide you into all truth. So this afternoon, we thank you for Jesus, and we thank you for the Holy Spirit. God, we thank you now for the church. God, we are the church of the firstborn. We are the pillar and ground of truth. We are the born-again believers on the Nazareth. We are those who have called out of our souls 
into the heights of the elements up to your name, God. For when we call your name, we call up to your name, for your name is high and holy. And it is in this place today we stand secure that we are the church. Wherever we are, we are the church of the living God. Cause our hearts to come together now, cause our souls to be bonded and knit again, cause our spirits to rejoice and be glad because our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. We're not afraid of this pandemic, God. For I understand that you hold the whole world in your hand. And if the pandemic is in your hand, if the world is in your hand, then the pandemic is in your hand. And whatever is in your hand, God, you control it. So we announce to the elements we are not afraid we are mindful but we are not afraid speak to our hearts give us a word of encouragement we pray in jesus name amen well god bless you right here the essential workers team thank god for the essential workers team ministry at the 1190 church again we thank god for you we thank god for our pastor we thank god for all the saints of this house and every house that would open its doors in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the high prince of the church. He is the bishop of our souls. He is our chief apostle. He is our good shepherd. He is our master teacher. He is all that and so much more. We thank God that it is in him that our heritage has been given even up to the Father. I know there was a time I would say I believe. This early afternoon, I know there is a word from the Lord. For a word in due season, how good is it? For man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. There is a word from the Lord. And I want you to give me your attention. I want you to walk with me this afternoon as we sojourn this conversation of the word of God again. Call your attention to the gospel as recorded by Matthew, the 11th chapter, verses 28 through 30. Yet I am going to refer occasionally up to the 25th verse. I am going to read into your hearing from the King James Version, Matthew's gospel, chapter number 11. Verses 28 through 30. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. If we would consider for the hearing that same rendered passage of scripture from the contemporary English version, if you are tired from carrying heavy burdens. Come to me and I will give you rest. Take the yoke I give you, put it on your shoulders and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble and ye will find rest. This yoke is easy to bear and this burden is light. The contemporary English version. If you are tired from carrying heavy burdens, come to me and I will give you rest. Take the yoke I give you, put it on your shoulders and learn from me. I am gentle and humble and you will find rest. This yoke is easy to bear and this burden is light. I want to talk to you today. Jesus is gently calling. Jesus is gently calling. God is patiently waiting. Jesus is gently calling. God is patiently waiting. I just want you to consider 
just for points of common cause. Let's just look at a yoke. Something that connects a joint together. I don't want you to put in anything else. Yoke. I need you to stay with me in the yoke today. Yoke. Something that connects a joints together. A bond, a tie. Any device that bears the weight of another thing. A connection between two things so they move together. Lastly, I want you to put that on the frontal lobe of your mind. A yoke, a connection between two things so that they move together. The yoke will bind you together. It will give you a common bond so that you are moving together. The yoke does not allow for you to go one way and your journey partner go another way. The yoke is a connection between two things so they move together. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Take my yoke. In other words, dearly beloved, if we take Jesus' yoke, it means we are now connected to Jesus. And Jesus is always the leader. I don't know about Jesus being the co-pilot. You might need another car sign. Why don't you just let Jesus be the pilot and you be the co-pilot? For he is the leader all the way from earth to glory. Let Jesus lead you all the way. Life is like a mountain railroad with an engineer that's brave. We must make this run successful from the cradle to the grave. Let Jesus be the leader. He will lead you safely home. Well, well I'm, not, I'm not stuck there. Let's look at burden. He offered his yoke and his burden. Burden is something that is exacting, oppressive, or difficult to bear. Let's just, just bring that down to a common agreement. A burden is something hard to bear physically or emotionally. No one wants an extra burden. I am trying to get rid of mine. And I don't want you to be offended when I don't want your burden. I'm struggling under this load of care that's my burden. Here Jesus says, this yoke is easy to bear and this burden is light. He says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He didn't say my burdens are my burden is light. When we look at this passage of scripture, I want you to just see that Jesus here is giving true rest to those who would know him as the son of God. Because if you will take time this afternoon and you would read in that same passage of scripture, Matthew's gospel chapter number 11, and you would read verses 26, 25, 26, and 27, you will find in verse 25 that Jesus is here talking to his father. He says, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and have revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for it seemed good in your sight. I'm going to get you to what Jesus is doing. The first thing Jesus is doing is talking to his father. Now, Jesus stops and says to his father, I thank you, Father. And acknowledges where his father is. Lord of heaven and earth. God is a God of specificity. Jesus is specific and definite in all of his ways. Even in his conversation back to his father. He says that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent. And have revealed them to babes. Now if you would go and read the passage of scripture upward. You would see why he's saying this in this passage of scripture. But now he's thanking God for those who would come to know him. And we will find out in order for you to know the father, you've got to know the son. In order for you to know the son, you've got to know the father for they are one. And it will bring us to verse number 27. And Jesus then says, all things have been delivered to me by my father. And no one knows the son except the father. Nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and to whom the Son will reveal him. Don't you leave me now. Jesus says, all things, not some things, 
God is all God is all things God with Jesus. The sum total of God is all, all the time. He's never in part. Jesus says, all things have been delivered to me by my father. No middleman. No middleman. I, I, was, I was looking on, the, on my uh, iPad yesterday just home. I, I think um, being home causes me to keep looking on my iPad. And when you're studying, uh, these ads pop up. And they always have sales. And the sale thing is always something you've been thinking about you want. Not that you need. But I, I was looking at it, and it says, if you buy this much as a first-time buyer, stay with me, you're going to get 40% off of the already reduced price, and you get perks. And then here's, here are some of the perks. No tax, and shipping is free. Let me tell you what I'm looking at. Shipping is free. That means that whomever you order it from now works with a middleman. I know where I'm going. Jesus said that my father have delivered. All things have been delivered to me by my father. My father, not the angels. There's no middleman between God and Jesus. But now this nice company that was offering me those uh, enticing perks said that shipping was free. That meant the, manufa the manufacturer was not going to bring it to me. The, manufa the manufacturer now has a deal with a middleman. God does not have a deal with a middleman. Everything from God is to Jesus. You didn't miss that. I was too plain. We cannot miss in this hour. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father. Nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and to whom the Son will reveal him. It takes me to John's Gospel just in thought. When Philip said, Lord, show us the Father. Jesus said, show you the Father. Phil, I know you didn't mean to tell me to show you the Father. He said, have I been so long time with you and you said show me the father he says when you've seen me you've seen the father he says I am the door to the father and no man cometh to the father except by me I told you Jesus and the father are one they are always complete Jesus says all things have been delivered to me by my father and where I'm, where I'm trying to get you now is down to this verse that's going to bring us into our message today. When Jesus says, all things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father. Now, does anyone know the Father except the Son, and to whom the Son will reveal him? This is to say that God the Father and Jesus Christ are one together and can only be known to those whom Accept the witness of this union as one. If you would, tomorrow, I've already told you what to read this afternoon. Tomorrow, if you would, not in your spare time because you might not get to that, but in your intended time, read uh, 1 John, the apostolic writing of the Apostle John, chapter number 5. And, and, and in that chapter, that entire chapter tells you of the witness of God is that Jesus Christ is his son. And if you do not accept Jesus Christ as God's only son, then you have rejected the witness of God. Wherever you read in this holy scripture, you're going to find that God and Jesus are so bonded until there isn't ever any separation. I'm moving. I'm moving. Jesus is saying that we are one when we get down we look at what Jesus has said in chapter in verses number 25 and 26. He says, Jesus is talking to his father and he's thanking him. And now he comes to where we often say this scripture. I grew up learning this scripture. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest, take my yoke upon you, and learn 
of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let's just see if this is really a call from Jesus. And if Jesus is making this call, what is the call about? And why is the call being made? After Jesus has uh, had conversation with his father, he now makes the call. Here after this conversation with Jesus and his father, Jesus gives the call. The call includes the invitation to come unto him. He says, come unto me. After he makes the call to come unto him, he makes, he gives you a promise. He says, if you come unto me, I will give you rest. Stay with me. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. He promises, I will give you rest. After he gives you rest, Jesus extends himself. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. That's how he extends himself. After he extends himself, he gives assurance of himself. He says, I am meek and lowly in heart. He also then gives you the promise of rest. He says, you will find rest for your souls. Jesus closes his own deal like this. He concludes the matter. He says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, now that's a wrap. That's a wrap. Those of you who know, you know, that's a wrap. When done deal, seal, it's closed. He takes on us. He says, I'm making this call today in the face of this pandemic. Jesus is still making this call. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. No one in the earth realm, no one alive is outside of this pandemic. This pandemic is in the earth realm. We are in the earth realm. Jesus is calling us because in the face of the crisis of this pandemic, we are all laboring. We are laboring in our minds. We are trying to understand something that we have never encountered before. We are trying to find out, did the Lord send it or did he allow it to come? We are trying to find out how long will it last. We are laboring in our minds. Yet Jesus makes a call. He says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. He says, in this pandemic, I will still give you rest. He says, you take my yoke upon you in the pandemic and learn from me in the pandemic. I'm still the same Jesus. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. The power of the pandemic has not diminished the power of Jesus as Lord. He says, for I am meek and lowly in heart. In other words, nothing ever trips Jesus up. The Satan took him to the high mountains. Jesus just went up there with Satan for entertainment purposes. Because Jesus could have dealt with that right there. But he said, no, Satan, you want to go up on the high mountains? I'm going to go up on the high mountains because you think the high mountains belong to you. But the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell there. But I'm going to go on the high mountain with you. When he gets on the high mountain, he's still Jesus. They could have stayed in the wilderness. He would have still been Jesus. In the pandemic, he's still Jesus. And he's still making call to us, saying, come unto me. He is calling you to out of weariness. He's calling you because he does not want you to become weary in well-doing. To become tired is okay, but never become weary. Be not weary in well-doing, for in due season you will reap a harvest of blessings if you faint not. So he's saying, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest if you will just arise and go to Jesus, he will give you rest. Your part, dearly beloved, is to come to him. 
hear the call and answer him. My answer today is yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you for the call. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you for the promise. Thank you for the identification. Thank you for the assurance. And thank you for closing your own deal. He says, you'll find rest to your souls if you'll just get up and make your way to Jesus. Oh, we used to sing a song in the old church. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus just now. He will save you. He will heal you. He will deliver you just now. The call is still come to Jesus. The call is still come unto me all. He has not excluded you. If you can believe that Jesus is the son of the living God and that God is our eternal father. God is our eternal God. God is our everlasting father. Jesus Christ is the only begotten son of God. And together they give us the pact to make us a part of them. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. He's not just saying, come and try me. He makes precious promises. He says, if you'll just come and take my yoke upon you, yoke up with me. Jesus is inviting you to yoke up with him. Jesus is not going to take your yoke. Your yoke is not strong enough to yoke you to Jesus. He's offered you his yoke. I tell you, the yoke is something that connects the joints together. It's a bond or a tie. Jesus is saying, come on and bond up with me. Come and accept my tie to bring you together with me. For if you put on my yoke, you will go with me. And whithersoever I go, you will go. And when I am arrived, you will be arrived. And therefore, there will never be a separation as it is with God the Father. So should it be with Jesus, the Son of God, who has given us life. I'm making a call today because Jesus is gently calling. Jesus is not, is not snatching. I was talking with the Lord the other day, and he gave me the blessed assurance of the wash. He says, you're not to bring them to me. You are to call them and they are to come to mind. God, where's the church? As much as I desire, I can't bring you to God. Because that is not my assignment. I am not empowered to do that. Jesus said, I'm making a call to you. Come unto me, ye that are weary. Ye that are weary. Get up out of your weariness. If you can rise up. You can shake off your weariness because if you do what you're called to do, I want to say to you today, do all that you can and God will do what he wills. Do all that you can and God will, I feel God in this house. Do all that you can because you can't do everything, but all that you can do, do that. And God will do what he wills because God can do everything. And you don't need God to do everything that he can do. He'll just do what he wills to do. God doesn't have to do everything that he can do for you. He's too much God. You can't handle all that God can do. That's why he said, I will pour out of my spirit. He didn't pour out all of his spirit. He says, I will pour out of my spirit to you. God will give you the measure that's needful for the occasion. Jesus is still saying, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. He promises. He says, for I am meek and lowly of heart. I am humble. That just simply means Jesus is not ruffled by anything. I've heard people say, I'm going to give you a piece of my mind. I don't want it. I saw what your mind was doing to you. You know I don't want a piece of your mind. 
And you got to be talking about P-I-E-C-E because you don't have any P-E-A-C-E. But Jesus has peace. He says, I am meek and lowly of heart. In other words, I will give you a heart infusion from my heart because there isn't any trouble in Jesus' heart. There's no pain in Jesus' heart. When Jesus rose from the dead, when he ascended back on high, there would never be any more pain that he would bear. He bore the pain going to Calvary's cross. That was the pain of death so that if you would accept eternal life, you would never have the pain of death. Jesus has died one time, and he's not going to die again. And he's not going to die again, so there's no more pain with Jesus. Out of his heart, infusion into your heart, it's peace. Eh, the kingdom of God is in Jesus' heart. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Everything about Jesus is at peace, for he is seated at the right hand of the Father, where he ever liveth to make intercession. He's not troubled about your sin. He's just making intercession, meaning he's covering you. He's undergirding you. And he's calling. And at the same time, Jesus is gently calling. God is patiently waiting. God is patiently waiting on you. Because God has to be in agreement with everything Jesus says or does. Oh, I left you, but I'm coming back for you. God has to be in agreement with everything Jesus puts before him. Because they are one. Because they are one. And that is why we can pray from 1 John chapter number 5. And this is the boldness that I have toward him. That if I ask anything according to his will, he hears me. And if I know that he hears me, whatsoever I ask of him, I have the desire of my petition. Because I will not ask him anything that is not according to his will. I don't know his will, then you don't know Jesus. Because the Father's will is not hidden from you. Jesus just said, I will reveal them to those that belong to us. Once you come to know Jesus, it is because you know the Father. You cannot know the Father and not know the Son. You cannot accept the Father and not accept the Son. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. You see, sometimes we are so twisted in our thinking. You, you go on to read 1 John 5. It will sanctify you holy. Listen to me. How is it? You love the Father and you don't love the Son. How is it you love the Son and you don't love the Father? That's utter confusion against the word of God. Jesus said, you can't even know the Father unless I reveal him to you. They can't even know me, Father, unless you reveal him. We've got to come past our way of thinking into the mind matter of the Lord Jesus. Let this mind be in me, which was also in Christ Jesus, so that I take on the heart matter and get rid of the hard matter. With Jesus, it's a heart matter. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Jesus is gently calling, no matter how heavy your burden, no matter how cumbersome your walk has been, he's saying, come unto me, all ye that labor. All ye under a heavy load, all ye that's struggling with the burdens of this pandemic. All of you that's trying to stand up in your faith, and not only must we stand up in our faith, but we must stand up in our faith for our children and our children's children. We must bear the infirmities of the weak because he has made us strong. He has made us strong. I want to leave this last rendering with you again from the contemporary English version that says, if you are tired from carrying heavy burdens, come to me and I will give you rest. He didn't even classify. He did not exclude any. As long as the burdens are heavy, if you are tired from carrying heavy burdens, come to me 
and I will give you rest, whatever your heavy burden is today. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. The Father and the Son are waiting for you. Take the yoke I give you. He takes his yoke and he gives it to you so that you can be connected to him. He says, put it on your shoulder, on your upper part, on your strong part, and learn from me. We've got to learn from Jesus. You don't want to just learn of him. You want to learn from Jesus. I believe that there's a, a lesson in this pandemic that I'm supposed to learn. I believe while I am sheltered in, there's a lesson that I'm supposed to learn. And if it's a lesson that I'm supposed to learn from God, it comes by the finished perfect work of the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, put my yoke on your shoulder and learn from me. See how I walk through things. See how I've yielded my life to the Father. He says, I am gentle and humble. I'm gentle and humble. I'm compassionate and merciful. I'm faithful and I'm true. I'm forgiving. I'm long-suffering. That's what Jesus says about him. And he says, put my yoke on you and you will be the same. Once you put his yoke on, you're going to be the same as Jesus is because now you're yoked up with him and you can see what he's doing and you will then do what he's doing. I'm telling you a life lesson that will change our minds in this pandemic. Your fretting is not going to change the, the time of this pandemic, neither is it going to lessen its duration. I come to my conclusion today. He says this yoke is easy to bear. It's a yoke, but it's <laughs> mind God, but it's easy to bear. It's not a Yoke that's not a yoke, it's a yoke that is a yoke. But the yoke is easy to bear. And the burden is light. No more heavy afflictions. No more being cast down and cast out, but lifted up and brought in. We are no longer foreigners wanting to hear the voice of the Father. The voice of the Father comes through the call of the son, he's still saying, ye who are weary, come home. He's still saying, no matter what the transgression has been, bring it to me. He's still saying, no matter how you stumble, he says, arise and come to me. He's still saying, no matter what the gainsayers have said about you, he has already settled his word about you. He's still saying, no matter what the diagnosis is, his prognosis is total healing and wholeness. He's saying when the surplus uh, and the stimulus and all that is gone, he's still saying, my cupboard is still full. He's still saying, I am the source of your support. Apply. He's still saying, I am the joy of your salvation. He's still saying, I am strength in weakness. He's still saying, I am light in dark places. He's still saying, I'm help in a helpless place. He's still saying, I'm hope in a hopeless situation. He said, look unto me and your son will rise for I am the son of the living God. He says, I'm gently calling and whilst I am gently calling you, my father is waiting. My father is waiting. May I say to you, you today the son of God is calling and the father of the son is waiting I'm going to say it again the son of God is calling us and the father of the son is waiting whilst the, whilst the son is calling the father is waiting what hinders you from arising and, and answering the call and going to the son unto the father you got to get to the son to get to the father he said I am the door to the father and no man comes to the Father except he comes through me, yet I'm calling you. He says, I'm calling you. You don't have to believe you're going to transgress. Uh, your, I want you to know your ID will not be checked. Uh, he has already called you with an everlasting call. Arise and shine, for thy light has come, uh, and the glory
glory of the Lord is risen upon you. We are the sons of God. We are the sheep of his pasture. We are the people of his hand. Arise and shine. This is the hour for the church to be alive and well in the face of a sick pandemic. This plague will not take the church out. When the pandemic is ended, the church will be alive and well. When the pandemic is subsided, is subsided, I want you to know God has been in charge all the time. God has been in control all the time. I call your attention to help and tell you that help is in the name of Jesus. And no matter what you're going through, he is not, God is never confounded about anything. What can confound God? So Jesus knew exactly who he was extending to. And so I tell you today that there's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. None else can heal all our soul's diseases. No, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No friend like him so high and holy. No, not one. No, not one. And yet no friend is so meek and lowly. No, not one. No, not one. There's not an owl that he's not near us. No, not one. No, not one. No night so dark but his love can cheer us. No, not one. No, not one. Did ever saint find this friend forsake him? No, not one. No, not one. A sinner find that he would not take him. No, not one. No, not one. Was e'er a gift like the Savior given? No, not one. No, not one. Will he refuse us a home in heaven? No, not one. No, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide us till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. If you are tired from carrying heavy burdens, come to me and I will give you rest. Take the yoke I give you. Put it on your shoulders and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble, and, we, and you will find rest. This yoke is easy to bear, and this burden is light. Jesus is gently calling. God is patiently waiting. Well, dear friends, right where you are, what a wonderful opportunity to answer the call from the Lord Jesus himself. He is the savior for sinners. He is the prince in the Lord's church. He is the Messiah. He is the holy one of Israel. He is the full image of his father. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He has already prevailed. He is the lamb that John looked and saw him under the altar with his throat cut, for he was paying the blood price for sinners' salvation. All that you need to fulfill a life with God, Jesus has made provision. He's not troubled by what has troubled you. Jesus is not troubled by what has troubled you. So therefore, he can deliver you from your troubles. Jesus is the healer. And he says, healing 
is a children's prayer. Whatever you need today, you can find it from God in Jesus. I offer you Jesus today, all over virtually. I offer you Jesus. Take him at his invitation. I don't know what to do. Just open your mouth and say, help me, Lord, to believe this word. Help my unbelief to believe it. In the face of this pandemic, help my unbelief to believe. If you will do that, you'll never lose. For God is a never lose God. May I tell you again? God is a never lose God. Everything he's ever offered, it was a winning deal. He doesn't have to settle his promises on anybody. He said, when I could swear by no greater. That's church all over again. He said, when I couldn't, Abraham, when I couldn't swear by anybody else, God said, I leaned back, and I swore by myself. <laughs> you know how, when you know you bad, bring that on. I can see God leaning back on being God and say, I'm going to take this one on me. Because he knew that he would never have to settle for anybody's decision. For he is his own decision maker. And yet he's saying to us through his son, Jesus, come now. Come now. Jesus is gently calling you. Will you arise out of your situation and your circumstance? Right where you are. Go on that chat box. Go on there and say, I am arising. I am accepting Jesus' gentle call. That's all he's waiting for. Just make, ah, just, just make it known. Put it out there. How many of you would be made a millionaire today and wouldn't tell anybody? The greatest gift that can ever be given is the gift of salvation through the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, God bless you. God bless you. It has been my humble privilege and my, um, my blessedness to be with you again today to let you know Jesus is still calling even the weary to come home. Let's walk together, children, and let's not get weary for this pandemic is going to pass. And when it passes, we will, we will be safe in the presence of our God. And I don't mean just over in the glory land. This pandemic is going to end in this land. And we're going to reap life, joy in this land where this pandemic came as a plague, as an opposition to the great promises of God. This pandemic is not a friend of God. God did not need this pandemic. But because he would control it, it is here. God bless you. Pastor Butler, will you come and lead us into our stewardship time? Uh, the ministry of giving is the joy of giving. Oh, that we would rejoice because all things come of thee, O oh Lord. And whatever we are going to give back to God, it came from God to us. The pastor protocol is coming now to lead us into the ministry of giving, which in this house is the joy of giving. God bless you. Let's bless the Lord again for our bishop. And I say it every week. And I don't say it every week out of just having something to say, but I say it every week because it is the truth. Those nuggets, those deposits that she deposits in our lives that help us to make it from Sunday to Sunday. We thank God for you, Bishop, and the worthy word that, again, you have deposit, deposited into our spirits on today. We're stronger, we're wiser, we're better, we're more fit 
in this pandemic because of the word that has been deposited in our spirits on today. What a wonderful atmosphere to give in. What a wonderful atmosphere. It's a wonderful atmosphere in this sanctuary on today. What a wonderful atmosphere to give in. And I know the Lord has been good to you. I know the Lord has been faithful to you, even as we've been faithful unto him in our giving, as we have been faithful unto the Lord in our tithing, even as we have been faithful unto the Lord in our seed planting. God is faithful, and God watches over his own word. When it over his own word, when it comes to our finances, to our, to our money, to those things that we need, we can believe God will do what he says he will do when we align ourselves with the word of the Lord. And how many of you know that the tithe is holy unto the Lord? So the Bible gives us an instruction. It gives us a directive. It says, bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open unto you the windows of heaven, and pour you out blessings that you will not have room to receive. And the Bible says that I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. So I thank God that even in these trying and troubling times, the Lord is yet rebuking the devourer. Amen. Amen. When we are obedient to the word of the Lord, there comes a time when we must see it come to pass. And God is rebuking the devourer, and it cannot come near our increase. Amen. It cannot come near our increase. And I thank God in the midst of this pandemic, God is showing himself strong on our behalf because we are obedient. In the midst of this pandemic, God is showing himself strong. There's increase that has come to this house. Why? Because we are obedient and because the word of the Lord came to us. The word of the Lord came to us at least two years ago and said what God would do in this year 2020. And I thank God that he's doing exactly what he said. I thank God that there's increase in our house. Amen. And I thank God that he's given us wisdom. Amen. Somebody say wisdom 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 over the increase that he has given unto us i see on yesterday president trump did an executive order and he signed off on the continued benefits but you know what he is not the source of our supply he is not the source of our, su our supply our, he is not our sources in god so I, I amen he is not i thank god that god said that i would shake the heavens I will shake the heavens and the nation. I will cause men to give unto the people of God. I don't know why he did and I, it really doesn't matter. But God said, when my people who are called by my name will align themselves with my word, I will cause the government to give you what is yours. You can beat God giving no matter how you try. The more you give, the more he gives to you. So keep on giving, saints, because it's really true. You can beat God giving no matter how you try. In the midst of this pandemic, don't you stop tithing. Don't you stop planting seed. Don't you stop giving. Don't you dare do it. God is faithful, and he watches over his own word. Hallelujah. Only thing God is obligated to watch over is his word. So I encourage you. I encourage you, increase has come to this house. Increase has come to this house. Everything that aligns itself under this ministry, increase has come onto it. Because of our head, it must, run, it must run down. So I thank God for increase in this house, in your homes, in your homes. Thank God for increase. I want to encourage you, those who are not on our prayer call on yesterday, the bishop called for a $7 seed, a $7 Sabbath day seed. Well, can I encourage you to, to plant that seed of $7? Plant that seed of $7 if you planted it for you, maybe for some of your children, your neighbors. I plant another seed if you did not have, if you didn't plant, we encourage you to plant. And if you did, plant it for somebody else. I was sitting right there, and I thought a couple more people I need to be planting for. So we thank God. We thank God will watch over his word. Hallelujah. We have not lost a thing. We have not. We have not lost a thing. So I thank God for his word. I thank God. I thank God. In this sanctuary, you come on and put your, your tithe and your offering, your seed envelopes in these wells, on this altar, rather on this altar, Bring it. The Lord told us years ago, if we lay it on the altar, he said that he would raise it up. He said if we lay it on the altar, 
he would raise it up so we continue to lay it on the altar because he is raising it up right now. God is going to show himself strong on behalf of those people who trust him. And why not, why not let it be us? God is showing himself strong. He is showing himself strong. He's showing himself strong. So we encourage you. We thank you. We thank you, thank you, thank you. I see you giving. I see you giving. I see you bringing your envelopes. I see GiveLify. I see it. It pings my phone. I see it. I see Cash App. I see you giving. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God for people who love. You have to love giving. You're a worshiper. Every worshiper is a giver. You have to love worship. You love giving. You have to see giving as an opportunity. As an opportunity. So we thank God for the opportunity, amen, the opportunity to give all over. I see you still writing. That's okay, amen. More increase, amen, as it's coming into your house, even as you're using wisdom, the wisdom of God. We thank God for each and every one of you. Thank God, Cash App, Givelify, U.S. Mail, <laughs> all of the, <laughs> thank you. All of the above. Amen. Amen. I didn't mind waiting. Amen. I'm like, I did mind waiting. <laughs> I did mind waiting. I can wait till we plan our seed. I can wait while we pay our tithe and our offering. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we tell you thank you right now for these tithes, these offerings, these seeds, these vows, all that has been brought into your household. Now, God, even as we have been obedient to your word, God, we tell you thank you right now. That even now you're watching over your own word and you're performing it. You're hastening to make it good. So, Father, we tell you, thank you that increase has come to our house. So, we believe it to be so and we will use wisdom in our spending. In Jesus' name, amen. Somebody clap your hand in the sanctuary out in our virtual world. Shout unto God, amen. Amen. I see you, amen. Because he's done it, say he's done it again. Amen. At this time, I want to receive none other than our own Bishop Julia Wade as she comes in the remainder of this service. God bless you. Well, saints, we are on our way out for today. Don't forget Jesus is gently calling. God is patiently waiting. The call is unto you and to your household. And don't just come, but bring someone with you. We are responsible for our household. We are our brother's keepers. We are sisters, one to the other. The Lord has kept his word concerning us. And we must be faithful to be one with the other, that it will glorify God. Even as the son is with the father and the father with the son, so ought we to be one to the other. Don't forget, don't forget, we are always in the spirit of prayer. Uh, tomorrow night, I just like to say it, tomorrow night at 9.30, we're on Prayer Connect. Hook up with somebody from the ministry. They'll get it right to you. Tuesday morning at 6 o'clock, we're with our, our pastor prayer call, Pastor C. Ruth Butler, and we go right into the 24-hour prayer of agreement on Tuesday morning to uh, Wednesday morning. And it's not just a prayer of agreement. It is a prayer of agreement against COVID-19 specificity. Then on Wednesday morning at 6.30, we are with our emerging generation leaders. That's our um, millennials, as the world calls them. Then on Thursday morning, we're right back at 6 o'clock uh, until 6.30 and going right again into the 24-hour prayer of agreement against COVID-19. How long? As long as COVID-19 will remain, we will pray against it. We will not leave not a prayer before COVID-19 has bowed its knee to the prayer power of the saints. And then on Friday morning with the men of Philadelphia led by Minister Johnny Watson and Elder Walter Bryant, Right on that prayer call, even our young men are on the prayer call that's calling. And Saturday from 8 to 9.30, 8 to 9.30, we're in fresh fire. That is our Sabbath prayer right at the house of prayer. Luke 18, 1 says, And Jesus spake a parable unto them, 
unto this end, saying, men ought to always pray and not faint. And Jesus spake a parable unto them unto this end, saying, men ought always to pray and not to faint. So it's prayer time all the time. God bless you. We send the word of encouragement out to all those that are troubled in heart, those that are lonely, those that are being confronted with oppression and depression. We are undergirding for your mom and you. You will not give in to the spirit of depression. We will pray and pray through that your mind will be renewed. This is the confidence we have in our commitment to God. That when we go into God on your behalf, he receives us and he sends an answer of hope to you. Those who are afflicted in your body, we are still standing saying he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. Jesus said healing is the children of God. We believe that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Healing is the bread of our healthy diet. We will be healed and not only healed but made whole. Now again we send joy we send peace we send love we send gentleness. We send us to you right out there and virtualized because we are in the clouds. Let's go. Everybody, everybody, let's stand. Let's stand. Amen. Amen. We are reigning in the clouds. Amen. Now, Lord, we love you as we leave this place. Kind sir, please go before us. Make safe and successful our journey, our sojourn. I'll travel out home should we stop along the way. Turn the head of the stalkers. Stay the hand of the muggers and the robbers. Let us reach our safe place, safe. And may we remember to say, this is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, According to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church, world without end. Every believer said, Amen, Amen, Amen. NCPM, we are out.